Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Colleagues, currently, school districts are able to grant transfers to students within their districts that desire to access educational opportunities outside of their home districts. This process can work well if both the home district and the receiving district agree to the transfer. But what happens all too often is that the home districts do not agree to these collaborative transfers and whose family believes that they would benefit from alternative academic opportunities or just simply a more positive learning environment are locked into what can be a negative learning environment. House Bill 3681 would allow students to enroll in the school district of their choice as long as the receiving district grants that permission. They would no longer need permission from their sending district to accomplish this. It really is as simple as that. And colleagues, I know sometimes we can get locked up or distracted by minutia as we consider all of these pieces of legislation, especially on a day like this. But I thought I'd just take a moment to read actually from the bill itself a few key passages that I think are clearly written and clearly enunciated that I think we all can wrap our minds around. The process would work like this. By March 1st of each year, a district school board shall determine whether the board will give consent to persons whose legal residence is not within the school district. If the school board, if the district school board will give consent, the board shall then establish standards by which the consent will be given. The standards must identify the number of persons to whom consent will be given for the school year. The district school board may limit the number of persons to whom the consent will be given based on school, grade, or a combination of school and grade. As you can see, these allow for much local control at the local school district level. A person seeking consent as provided by this section must re request consent no later than April 1st prior to the beginning of the school year for which consent is being requested. A school district is, must allow persons who are considered a resident of the district as provided by this section to use existing bus routes and transportation services around the district. They may provide a stipend for a person who is a member of a low income family as defined by ORS 339-147 in an amount that does not exceed the district's average cost per student for transportation and they must provide transportation if required by federal law, which would, require, which would meet any ADA, ADA requirements that would be upon the district already to provide transportation for its students. So basically, in a nutshell, House Bill 3681 would do this. A receiving district can only refuse student requests for three reasons. They simply are not allowing inter-district transfers. The student did not get drawn in a lottery, which is what would happen if, in fact, there are more applicants for the spots that the school districts propose than there are spots available. Or a student has been expelled from the district. Very clear. Clarifying language, there is clarifying language that a receiving district must admit all who apply. No favoritism can be shown to anyone here up to their cap and they may not discriminate based on race, class, academic ability, athletic ability, disability, IEP provision, etc. Districts retain the ability to transfer students at any time when both sending and receiving districts agree. If in-district students get the right of first refusal for enrollment opportunities, then it goes to siblings of transfer students. But once accepted, transfer students continue to be enrolled Districts can specify specific buildings and grades for transfer. Again, we're talking about local control, local say in how this process is managed and handled. The receiving district bears the same responsibility for students accepted through this process as they do for students who are residents of their own school district with the exception of transportation. And parents are responsible for transporting the non-resident student to the border of the receiving district where again they can access transportation services that exist in those in that district or in that receiving district. And again, low-income families may receive a stipend from the receiving district equal to the per-pupil transportation cost of the district. Now, colleagues, I, um, I understand that there may, in fact, be um, some comments about this today that will be not complimentary. And I'd like to address some of them head-on as we just... Um, or about being open and transparent here today, but I have 
I'm reading from a floor letter. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take some points, uh, bullet points off a floor letter that was here on your desk yesterday that implored you to vote no on this bill. Number one, this, point, this bullet point says that this bill would disrupt community school concepts. I can't agree with that. As a school board member, I believe that this bill is going to inspire school districts to determine what it is that they are good at and what it is that they want to be known for and what are those things that they do very well, extraordinarily well, so that they can make themselves attractive to students who may have the inclination to want to move into their district or to access those services. I believe this will build community concepts within school districts. Number two, this could lead to resegregation. Again, I don't understand the logic behind that comment. If anything, this bill would allow for students of whatever race, class, or creed, if they feel that they are in a situation that is undesirable to them, they have ability now to break out of that, to find a place that's better for them, to find opportunities that currently they don't have available to them. This does not lock anybody into situations that would continue to hamper them or make them not able to access quality education. And to, to just embellish that point, I'd like to read into the record a letter from an individual by the name of Eduardo Angulo, who is actually the uh, director of the Salem-Kaiser Coalition for Equity. He writes, my name is Eduardo Angulo, and I'm a parent of a child who attends school via an inter-district transfer in Woodburn School District. I am writing to you in support of House Bill 3681, which would help improve access to inter-district transfers of children within our K-12 system. I am grateful that Salem-Kaiser School District allows for inter-district transfers, but I feel it is important that we provide equity to students statewide. Our schools exist to support the students. We must allow for the fact that all, not all learners are the same and not every school is the right fit for each child. While it is easy to find districts willing to accept students, too often we find of parents hitting a brick wall within their local school district when requesting these transfers. Expanding this option to all students provides better utilization of our schools with no additional state revenue required. It enables learners who need something outside their district with a choice while more fully engaging parents as partners in their children's education. Again, that side by Eduardo Iguolo. One more bullet point I'd like to address on this floor letter from yesterday. It said that this bill would set up unrealistic timelines. The bill, the language I just read in the bill specifying the timelines about March 1st, April 1st, and May 1st were amendments that I actually had put in this bill because as a school board member, I understand what school boards deal with when it comes to time in the spring. When you're trying to make decisions about personnel, when you're trying to balance budgets, you're trying to determine what is going to be the playing field that we have when we show up in September. This bill puts on this process, I think, responsible criteria that I think school districts around the state will be able to work with. So again, I, um, I just disagree with what's being, uh, what's, what's being said in this, um, in this, floor, in this uh, floor letter today. But in summation, folks, this is about choice. It's about opportunity. It's about access. And I really believe this is about excellence. So I would encourage your support for House Bill 3681, and let's empower families, children, and school districts, give them the tools they need to make this work. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative. Further discussion?